everybody and welcome back to another Coaster Cheetah video and in this video I'm going to be doing a coaster review of Steel Vengeance which is the first ever RMC Hyper Hybrid Coaster at Cedar Point and this thing is just crazy it's mind-blowing absolutely incredible 205 feet 74 miles per hour 90 degree straight down drop most airtime moments on any other roller coaster in the entire world it's over three and a half minutes long in duration, and it's just incredible. So let's get into it by going over the layout. And you start off by uh, kind of like descending down. It's like a not very steep drop at all. It's like you are going right out of the station and uh, just gradually dropping, and then you go into a series of small bunny hills before you start the climb of the 205 foot lift. Then after the uh, lift, you go down the incredible drop, and you basically just get ejected out of your seat. It's kind of like Iron Gwazi, however, I think that drop is better. But Seal Vengeance's, Seal Vengeance's drop sorry, is still really incredible, like most, if not all, RMCs, and then you plunge down the 205 foot drop, incredible, and you go into a small bunny hill, and then you go up into a enormous uh, Camelback hill. This thing is huge. It's like a B&M hyper. It almost reminds me of like Gatekeepers, huge airtime hill, even though that does nothing. But this is crazy. It's it's a lot of sustained airtime ejector. And then straight after that, you go into the enormous Outer Bank uh, airtime hill. And this thing was pretty, like, revolutionary for the time. It was very new, like, especially one that big. And it was just, it's so colossal. And, like, the whole ride is huge. And, like, I feel like the it doesn't have the steel truss system for the support or for the lift. So it just looks more daunting and huge and, like, intimidating with that uh just the huge amount of wood that's holding it up there and then after that you go uh into another airtime hill and then up into an upward zero g roll which is very cool and you go around the lift and into kind of like a wave turn element kind of like on iron i believe it's called like a 90 degree stall or something and then you go down into the zero g stall and this is in my opinion, it's more like a downwards cutback. That's what it feels like. It doesn't really feel like a stall because it's very short. However, it's still good. But then after that, you drop down and go into another airtime hill, and then you go into a huge double up into the worst moment of the ride, which is the mid-course break run. And this isn't a bad element. I mean, I just it's such a a buzz kill. I really wish, like, I don't know why they did that. I know Mean Streak had one, but still, I mean, I don't really get it. It would be like 10 times better without it, maybe even better than Iron Gwazi. Well, I mean, that's just my opinion, but uh, at least the next element preceding the mid course re kind of redeems it, which is the drop off the mid course. And that is crazy. I love the drop off the mid course. It's just such a crazy element. And, I mean, you get so much airtime. It's, like, honestly kind of gets close to how good the first drop is. And then after that, there is a series of bunny hills. And this is really cool because you get a lot of ejector, but eventually going later and later into the ride when there's so much of them, it kind of gets a little repetitive. But these bunny hills do provide a lot of ejector. Then you go into a kind of bigger, snappier airtime hill, then into uh, some more bunny hills, and then into a zero G roll, which is your third inversion. Then you go into some more bunny hills, some more bunny hills, and then kind of like a miniature wave turn almost, and then another zero G roll, which is your fourth and final element, then some more bunny hills, and into the brakes. And uh, actually, there's some overbank turns in there, like miniature overbanks, and I mean, this ride is just packed with elements, so... Now moving on to our five categories, starting off with the drip. And just because of how intimidating and crazy this ride looks, for the drip, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The sign is awesome, the whole theme of the ride, I mean, it doesn't have much theming, but still, it's it's crazy. I mean, being by the water, it, it definitely deserves the 10 out of 10 for the drip. Now moving on to the restraints, they're not bad 
and I'm going to give them the same score as Iron Gwazi got, which is an 8.5 out of 10. Even though I think Iron Gwazi's are a smidge better, these still do have the swing axle strain, so not bad. Arm C restraints aren't the best, but uh, yeah, I think it deserves the 8.5 out of 10, which is not a bad score at all. But now moving on to the fun factor, and I think this is an obvious 10 out of 10. It's so crazy, it's unbelievable. I mean, so much airtime, the drops, I mean, it's just, the inversions are all great. So yeah, 10 out of 10, no doubt, for the fun factor. Now going into the intensity, and this is a pretty intense ride. However, in my opinion, it's a little bit less intense than Iron Gwazi. And it's not the most intense, however, it's definitely not a calm ride in any way. It's It reminds me of like a bucking Bronco or something. So for the intensity, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. And now for the duration. The duration is great. I love how it's such a long ride and it feels like it's never going to end, honestly. However, the pacing and stuff is kind of messed up by the mid-course. Again, I, I know it's just... I really hate the mid-course on this ride, so I'm going to knock the duration down to a 9.5 out of 10, which is, I mean, still great. And now for the total score, or the final score of all these five categories, is going to be a 46.5 out of 50. And again, a great score, phenomenal score. So yeah, definitely deserving. Steel Vengeance is, I mean, I can't even describe how incredible of a coaster it is. And with that being said, my personal score is obviously going to be a 10 out of 10. Uh, honestly, just such an incredible ride. It's just so crazy. You need to go out, if you haven't already, and ride Steel Vengeance, I see your point. And Maverick, and all the other coasters there, because, I mean, it's so worth it just for Steel Vengeance, honestly. It's such an incredible coaster. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Comment down below what you think of Steel Vengeance, how much you like it, how much you love it. And comment down below any other video ideas that you'd like to see on the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.